But what is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to one of the last TDI videos for a little bit. As those of you that follow the channel know, I bought another car. We're, we haven't done the reveal video or anything yet uh, because the weather in Western Canada has been absolutely trash and it just actually snowed a foot last night. For the love of God, please stop. So we're gonna have to wait a bit to do a cool reveal video of the new car, but I did wanna touch on a video that a whole bunch of people have been asking me to make in regards to one of the modifications that we made on the TDI, and that would be our catch can setup. So for those of you that have a two liter TDI or a three liter or whatever diesel you wanna throw a catch can on for the reason that you're watching this video, what we've got on the car right now is a radium engineering catch can setup. I will link the original video for filming the install of this catch can kit on this car uh, in the description or up in the annotation on the top that's gonna pop up now. So you can go over there and check it out. Uh, you can use the link in the description if you wanna pick up that kit. Uh, it helps me out. So anything that you guys buy through ECS tuning using any of my links does help the channel out. So if you uh, wanna buy something, Go ahead and check uh, check those links out in any of the videos. We, yeah, we've been running this kit now for about 5,000 kilometers. It is three months later. It is February. We did install this, uh, I think it was late October, and then it was uploaded in November of uh, 2022. We have had an abnormally warm winter on the West Coast. Um, not really dipping below five degrees Celsius much. So we aren't really seeing a lot of the negative effects of having a catch can pretty much on any car. It doesn't have to be a diesel or whatever when it gets cold um, because any condensation that you do obviously have come out of the engine or and can freeze if the car is parked outside. However, uh, mine is a bit of a garage princess at the moment, so we don't really have that problem. However, main thing I wanna talk about with the catch can, obviously my setup, as you can see, if you are new to the channel and haven't watched any of my videos before, is very far from stock. So I have a 2872 dark side development big turbo on the car with a Malone stage four kit. So I get a little bit more of the benefit of having a catch can than say most people would with a stock setup, which is where I wanna begin this conversation. If you are completely stock, I wouldn't really recommend throwing a catch can on your TDI or pretty much any car to begin with because you aren't really going to see a lot of the benefits that you really would from having a large turbo. That being said, if you do have an upgraded turbo on your TDI, um, the benefits of having a catch can have obviously shown to be present. The catch can itself has been picking up a little bit of oil. So naturally, obviously when you have a bigger turbo, you're gonna be pulling more air. So you're gonna be pulling more air out of your crankcase, regardless of you are, if you have the stock system hooked up or a catch can or whatever. So you're trying to trap those additional oil vapors and get them out of your intake track to obviously have a cleaner combustion cycle. And that's kind of how a catch can works. So with the kit that we have, it's, I would say it's probably about a seven, six or seven inch deep catch can. It never has gotten completely full. Um, I don't have a drain on the catch can. I haven't been draining it. I've actually only emptied it one time in the amount that I have driven it, driven with the car equipped with the catch can. And I've checked it and it's never gotten really full past the point of, I wanna say about one quarter or one third of the way full. However, I do have upgraded intercooler piping and my map sensor leaks a tiny, tiny little bit when I drive the car really hard. And recently it has been proving that the milky mixture that shows up in your catch can of the oil vapors and the condensation uh, mixing together has been getting sucked back through the turbo. So one of the things that I would recommend is if you have copied this setup that I have or you're going to do a similar setup and you have a catch can, I would definitely recommend getting yourself a catch can that has a drain on the bottom of it. Biggest reason for that obviously is that you don't have to pull the catch can out to empty it. Um, it does have a dipstick on this one so you can check the level. However, like I said, it would be beneficial if you did have some form of a setup that allowed you to drain the catch can. Now either to have it on a valve system so you can manually drain it like 
I don't know, every time you fill up, or you could have it on a passive system so that it drains. And I wouldn't recommend draining it back into the oil pan because once you mix oil and water and you have that like milkshake e mixture, you don't really wanna send that back into the oil pan. So having a passive drain that you could either just drain off the vehicle if you don't really care that much, I don't recommend doing it that way. Um, I had a subscriber reach out to me, I wanna say probably about six months ago that actually had his catch can, or it was just straight up his PCV system, drained directly into his exhaust. Now, I'm not entirely sure what the, uh, what the ergonomics on doing that really would be, but that is obviously another option that you could do is you could drain it directly into the exhaust so that it just eventually comes out the tailpipe, either from extremely hot EGTs at some point, picking it up and pulling it out or dripping out the exhaust due to the pressures and whatnot. That is another way that you could do it or however you guys want to get creative just to be able to drain the catch can so that once it gets to that, the level of full that obviously the pressure or the vacuum of the turbo is able to pick it up and pull it through the catch can and circulate it back into the intake doesn't, or the, uh, the charge system doesn't happen. That's where we're at with the catch can at this point. Would I recommend this at this point just based off of that information? Obviously in terms of if you're in a hotter environment, where the um, where the temperatures are higher, you're obviously not going to see as much condensation buildup in the catch can. You'll probably be able to grab onto a little bit more oil and keep that out of the system. So in that regard, I definitely would if you are a big turbo. Colder climates, if you're driving the car hard or long distances, you're keeping the engine bay nice and warm. Definitely track use, 100%. Definitely would recommend it because you're not going to be pushing multiple thousands of kilometers without doing checks on other systems and that kind of thing with enough time to either drain the catch can or service any other components. Would definitely recommend it there as well because you're obviously just gonna wanna keep a cleaner combustion cycle to begin with, more efficient, more power. You're not really shipping oil back in to be combusted into a diesel, which um, on the common rails isn't super fantastic. On the ALHs and that kind of thing, it doesn't really matter. But yeah, there you go. This, yeah, so this is, uh, like I said, probably one of the last videos that you're gonna see of the TDI for a little bit here uh, while we start building the the new vehicle. As I mentioned before, uh, it's not a golf platform and it's actually not diesel either. So we're going back to the gas cars and we're gonna be building something pretty spicy here. I am gonna do another video because I do have other parts I want to install on the car and I'll show you guys really quickly. Um, as you know, I do currently have a substantially loud exhaust on the TDI. It's a three inch or three and a half inch, I can't even remember what it is, stainless custom like cat back, I guess, with just like a Magnaflow resonator. However, because I call this thing the GTD sometimes, I decided I wanna put a GTI exhaust on it. So I've got a, as you can see, a modified GTI exhaust that I'm gonna have to look into because I, uh, I thought I was buying a stock one, but for a hundred bucks, I guess you get what you get. Exhaust off of a 2012 GTI. So we have that. And then I've also gone ahead and picked up a rear GTI diffuser, just a stock one. So we'll put this on the bumper to uh, get that installed. And then we'll do a whole video of doing the install on that because I know there's actually quite a few posts on the, not only the TDI forums, but just the golf forums in general of people that want to do the GTI exhaust upgrade just for the appearance and whatnot. So I'm going to do a video on it for you guys. Um, so if you're new here and you want to see that video or want to check out any of my other videos or my builds in the future, don't forget to subscribe. Um, drop a like or a comment. Let me know what you guys think about the catch can setup. Let me know how you guys have your catch can setups. If you, uh, your catch cans set up. If you have a diesel and you do have a catch can, I'm curious to know how other people have done it. Um, and then yeah, if you wanna check out how I did the entire setup for that, uh, you can check out that video in the description. But anyways, guys, thank you guys for checking out another TDI video. Stay tuned for the reveal of the new uh, car that is sitting outside, but peace out. I will see you in the next one.